Today I'm going to be demonstrating the correct use of a pipette. First off we're going to uh, demonstrate the use of a single, uh, single channel pipette and next we'll be looking at uh, multi-channel pipettes. So the first thing when we're using um, pipettes, the ones we're using now called fin pipettes, is to set the volume to the right level. Each pipette has a volume range that it can um, dispense between and it will be written somewhere on it. In this case it's between 5 and 50 microliters and then you can see what you're dispensing based on the digital display there. So today I want to uh, dispense a volume of 50 microliters so I wind that up slowly being careful not to go above, uh, above 50 until I reach there we go. Now it's very important that when we use these pipettes that we, um, we only work within the range that they're designed to work. If you try and dispense volumes either below or above the volumes that uh, the pipette's designed to use, you can damage the internal components uh, of the pipette and they're quite expensive to replace. The first one I'm going to demonstrate is the forward pipetting uh, technique and this is the one that's most commonly used. We have the first stop to there and you can feel the pressure on it and it stops and then if you push further it goes down to a second stop. Now this is important when we're dispensing liquids. For the forward action, the forward technique, what you do is you take the liquid that you want to um, pipette. In this case I have a blue solution in an Eppendorf tube. I um, depress the plunger down to the first stop then add it to my liquid gently release it slowly so that no bubbles form and then as I remove it from the Eppendorf tube wipe it against the edge to remove any excess liquid. Now you can see that it's sitting there neatly in the, uh, in the pipette tip. I now dispense that into the microplate well. Again put the tip against the side of the well and slowly depress it. You depress first to the first stop and then to expel all the liquid you press it all the way down to the second stop and then remove it from the well and take it out and release it slowly. That tip's now been used. It's very important not to contaminate pipette tips by re repeat using them between samples. So once I'm finished dispensing that sample that goes into my tip waste bin. On the side of the pipette there is a, um, a mechanism for releasing pipette tips. With my thumb, I gently push down until the pipette tip is released. Another big problem with, uh, that students have with tips is that once they've dispensed liquid like that, they move the tip around and, and that's very dangerous. You don't want to be lifting it like that because you run the risk of the liquid inside the tip running back inside the barrel of the, of the pipette. And if that happens, they need to be pulled apart and cleaned properly and it's quite expensive and difficult to do. So always try and keep the pipette as upright as possible so that if anything is going to drip, it's going to drip down and not back up into the working components of the pipette. Now I'll demonstrate a different technique for using a single channel pipette. Um, sometimes when we're working with very viscous solutions or solutions that tend to form bubbles, instead of using the forward technique of pipetting, we need to use what's known as the reverse technique. And in order to do this, what we do is take our liquid, you might be able to see there's quite a few bubbles in it, it's a detergent. So in order to dispense the correct volume using the reverse technique, what I need to do is dispense the plunger to the first stop and then take it all the way to the bottom to the second stop. While it's still depressed to the second stop, I place it into the solution and very slowly release it all the way back to the top and then slowly remove it. Now you can see there's liquid in the pipette tip. Now what I do is put that into the well plate but this time Instead of depressing it all the way, I only depress the plunger to the first stop. What's delivered from that first stop is the correct volume, so in this case 50 microliters, and what's left in the pipette tip now is the little bit extra that's, that's in there so that there can't be any bubbles formed in the solution. Once that's done, you can then just um, release the tip and that's done. 
I'm just going to explain a little bit about the differences between the forward and the reverse technique when we're pipetting. Both techniques are commonly used, the forward technique more so than the reverse technique. The major reason being that there's less chance of contaminating the pipette uh, and also it's easier to perform. However, as I said, when, there's, when, the, when the solution is viscous or it tends to form bubbles, you can get bubble formation in your plate uh, and that's a problem if you then want to uh, read it because the bubbles can interfere with the reaction. 